While Frodo and Sam edge closer to Mordor with the help of the shifty Golem, the divided Fellowship makes a stand against Sauron's new ally Saruman and his hordes of Isengard. This is my review of The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. So for those of you that don't know, I'm reviewing the Lord of the Rings trilogy before I go and see The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies in December. And if you haven't seen my review for The Fellowship of the Ring, then you should know that I think that the Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the best trilogies, in my opinion, in all of the movie history. And off the top of my head, I think that all three movies are in my top 100 list of all time as well. And I think that The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers is on the same level as The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring. And by that, I mean that it's awesome. The good points. Just like The Fellowship of the Ring, I think that the best thing coming out of this movie is the directing by Peter Jackson because he brings this fantasy, epic type of world to life. And not only that, but he does it by showing different tones to this movie and showing different emotions in the movie. And in this movie, he did a really great job of showing these battle scenes that were happening. But don't worry, I'll get into that stuff later on. Next, I think that the editing, the acting, and the writing are all equal to one another. And the reason I say that is because all three of those aspects kept me interested in this movie throughout because I believe the movie is 2 hours 40 or 2 hours and 50 minutes, and in that time span, it kept me interested. So for the writing, there's multiple storylines. You have the storyline with Frodo and Sam still going to Mordor to put the ring in Mount Doom. Only to come across this really small, palish, gangrely creature named Golem. Then you have the storyline of Mary Pippin being taken still by the Yorkai to Isengard, but only to like escape and be like in this storyline involving the Ents. And then you have the storyline with Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli trying to save Mary Pippin, only to be scuttled into this conflict that's happening inside of Rohan. The editing was good at keeping the pace of this movie because I knew when I had to like have fast pacing or medium pacing or slow pacing. Because of each of those paces you have different emotions happening with those paces and those emotions worked because of the right pace. And acting was done well by the entire cast because when those characters are on screen and delivering their scenes and dialogue you're like you're interested in what you're seeing. Well at least I was. And really all the other aspects, such as the score, the cinematography, the production design, the costume design, the makeup, the sound design, the visual effects, the motion capture, all brought this mythical fantasy world to life on an epic scale. Because even though I said that Peter Jackson helped to bring this world to life with his vision, I thought that all the other aspects, like little by little, helped to bring this fantasy epic world to life. Now before I get into the final good point about this movie, let's talk about Andy Serkis for a second in the cast. So in the movie, Andy Serkis plays Golem, and I think this was a really big game changer, and I think a lot of people would agree with me when I say it was a game changer for Andy Serkis' career and about the um, talk and everything about motion capture characters and how since Golem that motion capture characters have evolved. So Andy Serkis plays Golem like I said and Golem is this multi-personality, bipolar, um, psychotic, schizophrenic type of like creature. And I thought that Andy Serkis did a great job showing how psychotic that this character can be. And I thought that he did a good job as well of showing that he had a good side and a bad side to him. Like, you feel bad for one side of Golem, but you hate the other side of Golem. And there was a lot of talk back in 2002 when Andy Serkis played Golem when people were saying that Andy Serkis should get an Oscar nomination for um, Best Supporting Actor, at least. And personally, I don't know if he should have gotten a nomination because I don't think I've seen all of the films that were nominated for Best Supporting Actor. But I will say that Circus's performance as Golem was a game-changing role, for sure. And the final good point to say about this movie is THE battle scene. Yes, the battle for Helm's Deep, because this battle scene is one of my favorite battle scenes I've seen in film history. And I don't really want to get into it right now, and I'll talk about more in the spoiler section. 
So are there any bad points about The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers? Um, I wouldn't say so. For some people, I think it may be a little bit slow, but for me, I was invested and interested throughout the entire time. So with that being said, I'll give The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers a 4 out of 4 stars. Even though I don't think it's um, my personal favorite of the trilogy, I still think it's a fantastic film. And if you've enjoyed the first installment of the trilogy, then I think you'll enjoy this one as well. Alright, spoilers for The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. If you haven't seen this movie yet and you still wish to see it, then gather now because I'm going to be talking about this big surprise in the movie and I'm going to be talking about the battle scene in the movie. And I think you should really experience the surprise and the battle scene for yourself because you should just see like the magnificence in both the surprise and the battle scene. So let me get this surprise out of the way first. So for those of you that have watched the movie, then you should know that Gandalf is still alive in the movie. Like he got resurrected from Gandalf the Grey into Gandalf the White. And I remember when the trailers were coming out, they kept showing Gandalf in all these trailers, which I still find to be a little bit weird, but I sort of understand in a way, I guess. The reason I found it weird was because, um, not a lot of the newer people that haven't read the Lord of the Rings books probably didn't know that Gandalf was alive. So I found it a little bit weird that they showed him for people that haven't read the books possibly. So when I was going into this movie, I knew that Gandalf was alive since I saw the trailer. And when I saw him for the first time, I was like, yeah, he's alive. But I guess the reason they show Gandalf in the trailer was because the first scene of this movie was the like scene in Fellowship of the Ring when Gandalf is like, you shall not pass. But then we see Gandalf fall and then the camera follows him down into the chasm as he and the beast are like falling down the chasm. And you just see Gandalf just beating the heck out of this beast. And if I went into this movie and didn't know that Gandalf was going to be alive in the second installment, and then I saw the first scene of the second installment, I was like, hmm, I guess Gandalf was coming back later on. So let's get into the Battle of Helm's Deep. On one side, you had a few hundred men and elves against 10,000 Yurikai, and it's happening at this castle called Helm's Deep. Well, actually, I don't really think you would call it a castle, I guess a fortress. But anyways, I like the beginning of this battle when the Yorkai are just like pounding their chest with the armor gloves and their armor plates and like having their spear staffs like pounding against the ground. And I like the scene when the refugees underground are hearing like all the Yorkai war crying and everything and then it goes back up and it's like the sound of Yorkai chain was like phenomenal in my opinion because it's like yeah like that's what 10,000 Yorkai would sound like. And I like how the battle starts because there's this old man on the high wall and he's an archer and he's like fimbling with his arrow and then he accidentally releases the arrow and it goes into this one Yorkai and he's like Ugh, uh. And then all the Yorkai around him are like, rrr, rrr, and they're all getting mad and everything. And then the Yorkai leader's like, rrr, and then the Yorkai start charging. And that sometimes happens in real life. Like someone makes an, a, like an accident or a mistake, and then this huge battle ensues. But anyways, as the Yorkai are charging towards the walls, like everybody starts getting ready to fire their arrows, and then the lower wall starts to fire their arrows, and then the high wall starts to fire their arrows, and then the backup archers from behind the lower wall start to fire their arrows, and it's just like hundreds of arrows flying into these Yorkai, and these Yorkai are still like charging. Then you have the ladders come in, and then there's the Yorkai like ascending the walls now, and there's a battle on the wall. And then there's Yorkai starting to go up the rampway. And then the Yorkai set these two bombs in this drainage ditch at the lower wall. And there's this one Yorkai like charging towards the bombs of this like light, like this fire torch or something. And then Aragorn's like, Legolas, take him down! And like Legolas shoots three arrows at the Yorkai and like the Yorkai like won't go down and then Yorkai like with its final breath or something jumps into the bombs with the torch still and then the wall, the middle of the wall explodes for the lower wall and then as the Yorkai start pouring into the lower wall up on the rampway there's this um battering ram starting to go through like the Yorkai and Yorkai are like falling over the place over the rampway to their devs 
And then there's a ground battle happening at the lower wall, and it seems like it's a lost cause, and it seems like Theradin knows that, since he tells everybody to retreat from the lower wall. So as the people from the lower wall start to retreat, the Batarang gets through the front gate, and we have some Yorkai like, pouring in through the front gate, and there's a battle ensuing now there. And I like this part because Aragorn and Gimli then go to the side of the rampway and then Gimli's like, oh, come on, we can take them. And then there's like this, there's this gap in between the place they are and the rampway and then Aragorn's like, it's a long way. And then Gimli looks around and he's like, toss me. And then Aragorn's like, what? And then Gimli's like, I can't jump that distance, and just toss me. And then Gimli's like, uh-uh. Don't tell the elf. And then everyone's like, nah, no word. And then he just throws him, and then he jumps himself onto the rampway, and they start, like, causing mayhem to the Yorkai on the rampway. But anyways, these ladders start to come up on the taller walls. And Legolas is on the taller wall, and they sees this one ladder coming up, and then, he, like, through his, like, elf eyes, he sees, like, the rope connecting the ladder to the wall or something, and he gets an arrow, shoots the rope off, and then the ladder falls onto the Yorkai below. And I thought that was a really cool moment. So Aragorn and Gimli get out of there as the breach in the front gate is closed. And Theradin sees that they can't hold their positions any longer and tells everybody to fold back to the keep. So now they're inside the keep and it's morning. And Theradin's all down and everything saying like the forge is taken it's all over. And then Aragorn remembers what Gandalf said to him a few days ago in this other place in Rohan saying that he'd be back in like a few days in the morning and you have to look to the east or something. Then Aragorn's like, ride out with me. Ride out with me and meet them. And then what happens next is one of the best scenes of this movie because like you see like the, the camera's starting to like close up on Aragorn and Theradon's face and it looks like they're getting ready for battle and it's like, oh my god, man, you're like, you're gonna like attack the Yorkai head on. And as the Yorkai get through the gates of the keep, we see that Theradon, Aragorn, and the others are on these horses as Gimli's in this, like, tower blowing his horn. And then we see, and yeah, when I saw the horses, I was like, oh my god, they're on horses. And then we see them charging through the Yorkai, and I thought it was an awesome scene because once they get on the rampway, it's like dominoes, like, they, they're heading head on with the Yorkai like, charging towards them, and they're just, like, falling over the edge or they're getting trampled over. And as the group gets into this mass of Yorkai, we hear something in the distance, and in the next shot, it's Gandalf with his horse, like, like this, like, Arr! and then Gandalf is like, Theoden King stands alone, and then, um, Theoden's nephew comes up and he says, not alone, and he's like, we're here, and then, like, this cavalry is, like, right behind him, and it, at first it doesn't look like much, and then the nephew is like, to the king! And as the cavalry is like charging down this hill, which is like, it's a really big slope. We see that there are more than a few dozen riders. There's like a few hundred riders, actually. But anyways, the Yorkai start to get ready in formation with their spears for the oncoming cavalry. But then as the rest of the cavalry um, get off the top of the hill, like the sun like shines down on the Yorkai and they're blinded by the sunlight. And the cavalry just like smashes through them and it's like, oh my god, I mean, that just sent chills down my spine with how that scene was edited and how it's directed and with the score in the background. And basically, yeah, they win with the cavalry's help and the Yorkai retreat, and it's like, victory, third, and says, we are victory. But yeah, like I said, one of the best battle scenes I've ever seen. So that was my review for The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Hope you guys liked it. And other than that, guys, that's it.